station in the infinite. Hey guys, welcome back to DCS World. I'm Spudknocker, as always. And it's been a little while since I've made a Harrier video that isn't just straight up gameplay. Um, and I got inspired to make a quick video here because on Hoggett I saw a little bit of confusion on whether or not uh, FLIR on the HUD is implemented uh, and a little confusion about how to actually get it onto your HUD. So um, we're going to go over how to get that FLIR feed up onto your HUD. So the AVA-BNA variant is specifically designed to make sure that it is suited to operating at night, hence the NA night attack designation. And this means it has a special line and raster HUD on it. Now when we look at a HUD, we can see that it has lines, which would be these guys. And if we turn on the FLIR, which we will do in a little bit, that's called rasterization. Now ra line and raster HUDs were a very big deal back in the late 80s um, and early 90s. It was very, very difficult in, to make the technology back then in order to have both line and rasterization be able to project, project onto the combiner class of a HUD. I believe the F-15E Strike Eagle was the first aircraft to have a true line and raster HUD, and that same technology was leveraged into the AVA-BNA, the F-16 Block 40, F-16C Block 40, um, as well as a number of other aircraft, including I think the F-18C Hornet and later blocks, like the one we have in DCS World. But don't quote me on that, I'm not totally sure about the Hornet. So we'll go ahead and get started with my quick and dirty, dirty little tutorial here. One thing you're going to want is your flashlight uh, for this. It's normally connected to left alt L, however I shortened that to L just to make it a little bit easier. And the thing that can be a little bit complicated here is if you look at our day-night setting for our HUD, it's automatically put into day. Now we cannot get rasterization on the HUD in day mode. We have to bring it down into full night mode. It will not work in automatic mode and it, it will not work in day mode. So it has to be in full night mode. So bring that switch all the way down into night. And then we'll take a look at the key bindings we need to set in order to get the rasterization onto the HUD. So we'll go ahead and pause this guy. We'll bring up the adjust controls and we'll go ahead and quick um, quick select the sensor select buttons. So sensor select and other, other um, terminology for that might be the castle switch. That's the kind of castle looking um, switch that, that's on the um, stick of the Harrier, the um, Hornet, the FA, sorry, the F-15E, other jets of that nature. So I believe there's even one on the um, A-10 as well. So in a real jet, you could push down the entire button into the stick and that would serve another functionality. However, we only have aft, forward, left, and right on the um, flight simulator peripherals that we have, at least the cheaper ones. I'm using a uh, Logitech X56, which I really like. However, like I said, I can't simply push that down. But we have five functionalities for our castle switch or sensor select switch. Um, and one of those, the down, the one we can't actually model in our uh, cheaper peripherals, is the one that we need in order to put rasterization onto our HUD. So I actually used a modifier. Oops. I actually used a modifier and simply used my modifier on my stick and aft on a center select button. And that way we can just model that in a way that makes sense to me because just uh, modify down and aft. So that makes sense to me. And then once we have that done, it's very simple to get um, the rasterization onto the HUD. So we'll jump back into the cockpit and we just simply hit that sensor select switch down and boom, that's all there is to it. We can turn it on, we can turn it off at will. Right now we have it in white hot mode. So uh, the trees and things like that are gonna be the um, brighter parts of the uh, rasterization on the HUD in order to give us some relief um, and give us a picture on the HUD of what's in front of us. Now if we hit sensor select right, 
we can bring up the HUD onto one of our, sorry, our FLIR onto one of our MPCDs. We can also, if we hit that sensor select right again, we can turn it into um, black hot mode, which as we can see in a very dark environment like this really isn't going to help us much because it's just going to give us a big um, white square. So black hot, or sorry, white hot mode is definitely going to be the mode that you're going to want to be in the most, especially at night. If you're in the desert um, on a bright day, you may want to turn on black hot mode, maybe find a uh, little hot spot in the desert a little bit easier. But uh, for the most part, you're going to want to stick with white hot. Now you can, of course, deselect out of that FLIR uh, video on the MPCD and still have your FLIR up on the HUD. So the next thing that I wanted to point out is I believe this was a rather new addition to the Harrier, but our NVG have a gain up and down uh, uh, sense select switch again. Or now it has one. I believe this is relatively new, or maybe I'm just being dumb and just found it, but I figured I would point that out to you guys. So we'll go ahead and take another look at our controls. And we can see that it's called NVG brightness up and NVG brightness down. I put this onto my keyboard up and down buttons because we're not going to be using the um, up, down, left, right keys for flying if we have a nice hot task like I'm using now. So it makes sense to me to have that be up and down on my keyboard. So um, that's all I wanted to bring up today. I hope I cleared up some misconceptions and uh, hopefully you guys can uh, get to fighting at night much better in the Harrier, which it was designed to do. So, like I said, hope you guys liked the video, and uh, please give me a like or a subscribe. I'd very much appreciate that. And as always, fly safe, guys.